No emotion. Craft Masters Production. Yeah. Uh, I need to buy a monocle for my third eye. I went to the hospital and died. I'm tired of being the middle child. Time to commit murder. I'm gonna say something. Let me know if it hurts you. Muslim hamburgers are better than American hamburgers. Go to church and catch the Holy Spirit in COVID-19. Mean spirited ever since I was 19. My sense was knocked out of me like Aaron Hernandez. Band-aids and bandages won't stop the bleeding. Tell the referee don't stop the fight. I'm not defeated. Learn to ride a bike with one training wheel. I'm competing against other human beings eating steroids I'm mad annoyed at the sound of your toys I'm in a void trying to avoid human contact A hypochondriac, I think I'm about to yak Playing tic-tac-toe, I'm about to become a master How about no, let's play rock, paper, scissors Last night I caught your sister masturbating I'm fighting anybody assisting resistance Tell the children that read braille to listen I can't smell you, have you taken a shower? Our lives are becoming slowly more different I need sharper knives, about to cook steaks About face, soldier I thought I told you, you need to wait until you're older I will take your plate of food and throw it off the balcony How could this be? How are you stronger than me? Nigga, learn how to write with calligraphy It was all a dream Until Biggie Smalls magazine subscription got cancelled This situation we should've handled face to face Mono e mono Tongue kissing, cigarette smoking, white bitches and caught mono What the fuck? Did you do to my car? Drugs on me, I can't get caught If I go back, I'm going dead or alive I'm not gonna lie, recently I have peed to bed Believe in a dream and that shit will come true Believe you're having sex, you're busting nut in your sleep too You sick, you need soup No more toilet paper for you to poop Can you do me a favor, buy me a razor So I can go and kill myself Solitary confinement, I'm all by myself I'm too poor, I can't afford to buy myself Butter on a pan Pancakes and watch it melt My mother can't stand that I sell drugs and get paid Let's lay down and vacate Put your hands together and pray Look at my mask, it's golden Don't ask Who am I? No emotion Yeah uh. Craft Masters Production gentlemen welcome to another episode of the everyman show that is right we are still here this isn't a lie this is a real new one i am your host john everyman sitting with me it's nobody because we can't have nobody in here unless you're very very depressed and apparently walter qualifies so whatever <sighs> Guys, I hope everyone's staying inside. These quarantine days have not been easy. You know, still here in the Everyman Podcast Show bunker, doing episodes, you know, in my secret location, trying to maintain. And I know it's not easy for everybody, man. I've lost all my co-hosts. Little by little, Mr. Goodnight held on as long as he could. It's just he ran out. He said, forget it. We're done. I'm out of here. And I agree. I think everyone right now should practice this social distancing. You know? I don't know uh, what else to do in these times. You know, I've sat at home myself. I kind of look like Captain Caveman for those older people before I got on this show. So, you know, I've made, I've masturbated a little bit, you know. Arm got tired after day two, you know. You missed a girlfriend after a while, you know, you got to, 
You got to resort to measures, you know, whether you're a guy or a girl. No matter. But uh, yeah, you know, just trying to survive and do this stuff, guys, for you, for myself. I feel that anyone that's out there right now entertaining in the most extreme conditions, I salute you because you two are trying to put your cause together and help people stay entertained. And uh, the Everyman Podcast Show is here to do that too, man. And you know what? I don't care. I'm still going to interview people. I'm still going to get our friends on this show. Just like we did last week. Just like we've done with many episodes, man. We're all about the people. We all, I love to talk to others and explore lives and see what's going on. I'm not going to stop that. Virus, no virus. I'm, I'm just not. Now, even if Walter doesn't show up. If Walter doesn't show up, I don't know. I may be. But guys, we're going to get going. I have a ton of guys and gals ready to come into our show and just talk, man. We're going to find out what's going on with their world in this uh, in this new world that we got going on with this uh, COVID-19 crisis, SARS, COVID-19. I don't know what to call it anymore. Every week it's got like a new name or something. Uh, hold on. I, I got I got like a little co-host and she just wants a, her camera time. Hang on. All right. Say Say hi to everybody, Lily. You see, this is Lily. There you go. She got her five seconds. Everyone wants their chance. Everybody wants their time to shine. Uh, let's get into it, Walter. Next topic. Ladies and gentlemen, this is one of our co-hosts, Seabass. See if we can get Seabass on this sucker. Seabass, are you there? Seabass, can you hear me? Seabass, do you see me? Yeah, they can all see that now. That's, it's proof, man. Proof. Not, this is my bunker. This isn't my house. I don't live in a bunker. Damn, what's going on with Seabass? You know, that's when you have a real co-host. This, this is shows you dedication to a co-host. They don't pick up their phones for shit. And watch, he's going to pick up the phone out of nowhere. Got a Seattle's commercial in the background for him to check out. I don't know. Wait, would you relax? Let let it go to voicemail, bro. Maybe he's putting makeup on. Maybe he's trying something new. Who knows what he's trying? There he goes. Oh, he didn't answer. There he goes. He didn't answer. <laughs> All right. Now we said Zephyrin is the next guy. Zephyrin. Gonna be an interesting person. He's a comedian, but he's a comedian that's very not very, but just he's just different. He deals with unique challenges in a sense. Let's see if we can get our good friend uh to answer a call. Yeah, what's going on there? Oh wait, I think I think they're still trying to call us. Hang on. It what's going on here? Hey, listen, man. Oh, uh, there we go. First, first of all, don't no, be calling bitch, nobody. No, I got you. Don't be calling. Do you not nobody. see me? Yeah, I can see you. I don't need headphones for you. I can hear you clearly. What's wrong with you, bro? You got like a nervous tick over there with your hands? <laughs> Bro, ladies and gentlemen, we have my good co-host, a co-host I haven't seen in quite some time, Seabass. How you been? I'm so friend? sorry. You were calling and like it was saying like Safari doesn't support or whatever. So I had to like I was about to download Google Chrome and everything. Mm. That's because um these this new way of life of us trying to communicate we're not that we're not savvy we didn't take any it courses we were learning how to write jokes down so no one knows how to operate this stuff yo it's so funny because i'm looking at you through the facebook laptop and then i have a different angle where i can see uh walter <laughs> so it looks like somebody's robbing your house like i thought i'm like yo, it's a black dude robbing you john <laughs> Everybody worry about the coronavirus, man. I'm getting robbed. Like, you be like, you scream in the background. You know what would be funny? You scream in the background, quick, there's a murderer. 
There's a murderer behind you. <laughs> hey, quick cheers, man. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Yeah, buddy. Cheers, dude. I'm thank here. Thank you. Thank you for I'm keeping here. this shit going, man. I thought, Walter, you are brave, bro. Like, hey, man. Whew. Like he said, if it's his virus, it's my virus. I mean, Vice look, versa. bro. Like, if there's one place that I think if you didn't already get it and and now you're good, it's with you. You know, like if you didn't get it hanging out with John, I think you're immune. I think at that point you're safe. You're good. I just thought Walter was so depressed that that virus would never want near him. Uh, right over there in that drawer. So I'm see trying that. To it, I'm trying to keep it in 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 uh. What are you sipping it's on, not man? So style. What is that? What is that? Modelo? Okay. You got the Modelo? Oh, you yeah, got the bro, was, You it, found reasons to use your beer mugs. Damn, I should have used mine, man. Yeah, oh. bro. Absolutely. Damn, is that like I, one of those that you pre-frost and shit and it comes out cold or you just feel, is that ice in there? Yeah, no, you, you pre-frost it and the best part is that the, the inside part, it's a uh, gel. It's, it's not like no crazy liquid or anything that'll be like harsh. Yeah. So... It's just a nice little gel, so it stays cool longer than just like regular water or whatever. They don't get bacteria like the other ones. I don't know if it's true, but that's what they said. Hey, man, listen, at this point, that bacteria will be way better than any of the bacteria that's outside right now. <laughs> bro, absolutely, bro. Absolutely. You're not playing. Hey, so, so talk to up, me, bro? man. No, no, you tell me, man. How's How how are you handling all this? Where, where Where's your mind been lately? Um, Honestly, like, I was chill about the whole thing until i don't know if you found out but i heard i saw a post that somebody got one of those um urgent messages to their iphone that said um the Publix on 137th and miller has been closed because three of the employees have tested positive for coronavirus which makes me freak out a little bit because they might start shutting down grocery stores or the means of getting groceries might change, and that'll be a little crazy. Now there, that the that, latter might be real. Out. The latter might be real. That they're they're gonna eliminate customers doing that, or what they'll do, like they what they like they done with everything here. Nothing has been implemented overnight. Everything got phased in in a sense. Like right, right. You know, first we started with okay, restrict hours, and then we went from restrict hours to restrict people. Okay, let's limit the people. <laughs> And little by little, it's just turned into something where it's just cutting everybody off. And what's going to end up happening here, the next phase, I would think in an instance like that is going to be that, hey, we shrink the amount of people inside at the moment. OK, and not shut down completely. Let's shrink it down. And if that doesn't work, then, yeah, shut it down for them and just leave the Instacart shoppers and professionals come in there and do delivery. I mean, bro, professionals, like I was a post, I did Postmates. If you could do Postmates, you could do Instacart. And like, I mean, I'm not saying that I'm disgusting, but like I definitely wasn't walking around with hand sanitizer. I mean, I did have hand sanitizer in my car, I do, but I wasn't using it on every delivery. You know what I'm saying? Like, and you don't know how that shit, apparently, again, I don't know how accurate I am in these statistics, but they said, it lasts on certain surfaces for up to three days. And now certain studies are saying it lasts up to cer on certain surfaces for up to 17 days. I mean, like, we're literally learning about it as the days go on. Yeah, every day is, oh. is a new education. I feel so, that every so day we, I wake up, I'm relearning the world. Yeah, bro. So it's, it's been kind of crazy, bro. But at the end of the day, like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, you know me, I'm not going to trip about, like, looking at the negative. I'm trying to look at it from, from the positive side of just, like, you know, having downtime. I tell everybody, like, even my mom, like, all the shit that you've been talking about, like, oh, I want to do this, but I don't have the time. Or I don't. Now you don't have that excuse, you know? And, like, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying, like, don't worry about money because it's absolutely true. Like, you should definitely worry about money. But at this time, it's not like you are out of a job individually and you are doing wrong. Like, right. no, everybody. Everybody is. And it's just like. You got to roll with the punches, and I'm just like, bro, just take this time to, like, rest and catch up on fucking shit you wanted to do, shows you wanted to watch. Like, it's, it's regardless of what you do with your time, let's just say we're in quarantine for 28 days. Those 28 days are going to pass whether you're happy, whether you're mad, whether you're anxious, nervous, relaxing. So it's just like, bro, just take your time with it. That's what I'm doing, bro. I'm sitting here. I'm drinking. I'm chilling, staying in my little house, you know, playing with my dog. So I'm 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 good, man. I can't complain, bro. What if it has that all you done? Have you been one of those like you were mentioning a second ago, one of those to do the things that 
you haven't been able to do with in your normal, you know, when everything was before this, you know, have you done anything new and different other than pick up a new drink? <laughs> um, well, new drink, no, because I've always drank this whiskey, but um, new things like uh, I, I actually like the other day I, I ran around, you know, the neighborhood. I went for like a 30 minute run around the neighborhood. And that's something I, uh, you don't do. No, because, well, typically I go to the gym. You get me? So like running. Oh, yeah. yeah. It, going to the gym and running are two different things. So I was able to run a little bit, chill. Um, I've definitely done the at-home workouts, you know, so it's been a little bit more like it, it's made me discipline myself a little bit more. I wouldn't say that I'm going, like I'm not working out at home as many days as I would be going to the gym per se, where like in a regular week, I might be like five, six times a week here. I've, I've worked out maybe like every other day or like, yeah. you know, so uh, other than that, um, I actually caught up on a lot of comedy stuff because I know everyone's talking about like, are you writing? Are you writing? And that's my biggest, that's the biggest thing I tell every comic that I talk to. Like, yo, just write, try to write. And it's hard. It's hard because it's very simple to not write right now. Like it's very good to be in a position where you're not creative. You're not going on stage. You don't know if your bits are going to work. Do you feel but, that's you right now? Do you feel you're not, uh, you're not feeling like that? Um, yeah, like I, I feel like it's a little bit challenging to sit down and just write considering everything that's going on. But at the same time, because I felt like, oh, my God, I'm not writing. It's put me in this anxious position where I feel like I'm not doing nothing with my time. But um, I definitely realized like there's other things you could be doing. So this is where I wanted to plug this book. It's called The Comics Insight, The Art of Stand-Up Comedy. And this book was recommended by Kyle Grooms. Um, a few years back oh, that wow. I had spoke to him. Kyle yeah, shout out to Kyle Grooms. He told me about that book. And I've read most of it. So I'll give you like a brief breakdown of the book. It kind of gives you an introduction into stand-up for like, if not necessarily the history of stand-up. Um, there's another good book for that, which I'll, I'll write it out later on. But uh, for writing material, and then it gives you insight. Like this guy personally went and interviewed certain comics uh, just to name a few, George Carlin's in this book, uh, Louis Anderson, Richard Jenny, which is fucking rest in peace. He's hilarious. Jay Leno's in this book, Sinbad, Jerry Seinfeld, Chris Rock. So he actually went out of his way, interviewed these um, comedians, and then he would like do like a question answer format. So the whole book is not like a typical book where you're just reading chapter by chapter. It's like, you know, a paragraph is in bold. So, you know, that's the question. And then another paragraph is regular. So, you know, that's the answer. And it tells you like chapter or like comedian by comedian, he'll ask them different questions and, and things like that. And then towards the end of the book, they actually interview um, club owners, you know, like people who own like the, the improvs and stuff like that. And like what they look for in comics. So it's very insightful. It's definitely really? very, very insightful. Man, you know what? I actually might want to read that myself. Write I that highly, book I down when you're done and lend it to me. It. Wipe it down when you're done huh? and lend it to me. Wipe it down and spray also, some lace I'll on lend it to me right after. I'll write it down. I'll write it down in, uh, in, Actually, in the chat. Actually, you know what? And That's then... a good idea. Just fucking t send me pictures of the book. <laughs> Take a picture guys of each page. I send them a dick. <laughs> no, fuck you, man. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, so uh, real quick, man. You know, we never get a chance to do this on the show, me and you, man. And I know that you're a bigger fan than I am with sports, though. But I love sports just oh. as much. We had this conversation about a year and a half ago, not this past Super Bowl, but the one before. We had this conversation about Brady and Belichick both being separate. Both and I and I posed that theory to you when they played with the Rams and I told you and you guys were like, "Ah," and you, and you kind of went against me now. But here's the question now in reality. Brady's in Tampa, Belichick, New England. Who do you think is going to fare better? Who you think is going to who? Who's going to fare better? Um, Honestly, bro, I would not be surprised if Brady takes the Bucks to the playoffs and meets Belichick in the, uh, that, that, in the, uh, in the Super Bowl. Right. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't rule it out that that would be the way it goes down because I mean, like, bro, at the end of the day, like, it, it's, it's like, if you want to go fifty-one percent Belichick, forty-nine percent Brady, or vice versa, I think you're right. You get me? Like, I think there's an argument to be made for both, 
but I don't think that neither one is not going to make it uh, without each other. Like, I don't think that playoff bounds out of question without each other. So you feel that uh, being separate, none are going to win the Super Bowl? Um, If I had to put my last dollar on a, on a, on a person who was going to win the Super Bowl, not if they made it, but if they won, um, I definitely probably go with Belichick. I probably will go with Belichick. I do too, which points back but to what I told it, you last it, year, which now you finally side with me, and I tell you, bro. But no, no, no. Shit. But it's it's not to say it's not to say solely that I go like, oh, bro, no doubt Brady needs Belichick. No, but I'm looking at it from a control aspect. Like, you know, the head coach has way more control of what's happening on that field because he has control of 22 men. Tom Brady could only throw to about three to five receivers at a time, and not always. You know what I'm saying? He can't yeah. control defense. Belichick has the final say on defensive plays. That's why I'm saying that. But do I think Brady cannot win without Belichick? Absolutely not. I think Brady could still win without Belichick, and I think Belichick can win without Brady. But let's just say Tampa Bay plays New England in the Super Bowl. Yeah. I think I think who, who uh, you got at that I, point. I give the edge to Belichick. You bo- see, and I tell you, at the end of the day, Brady ain't shit, and that just proves my point, my friend. We are gonna wrap it up just like that, just with that face, that face of expression says, "I'm on point." <laughs> All good, bro. My friend, I hope Cheers, to see man. you uh, soon in the studio, man. You, I feel like you were missing in action, but I feel like I'm glad to talk to you. I feel like it, I felt a little bit of normalcy talking to my co-host right now, man. Like it felt Absolutely, good. Bro. Um, please go shave your head. I, I don't like what I saw this week on Instagram. I don't know. What the, God damn it, bro. Listen, man. You know we're not supposed to set our secrets on our off days. Oh my God! The people this that see us bad, ball don't bro. know that we do things like that on our off time. You got to be careful. <laughs> bro, fuck it. I'm off, baby. I'm relaxing. One of those things is saving money on Gillette Fusion Blades. Okay. Guys, check out my homie Seabass on Instagram. It's Seabass Matar on Instagram, right? Yeah, Seabass Matar on Instagram and Twitter. And I think Seabass the voice on YouTube, which I will be releasing. A stand-up thing, like little fifty-minute clip I just put together. I'm releasing it bit by bit. Thank you guys. Let me know Thank when you, you do that, man. I want to talk to you about that for the next episode. Let me know when you get that clip Absolutely. ready. Absolutely. All right, my Absolutely. friend. I love you, man. Thank you Take so much. Care. Keep this shit going, man. Honestly, like, thank you for real for the entertainment and keeping this shit going from the crib, bro. You, Walter, too. Thank you, Walter, for not robbing the house. He he hears you. He knows it. Hey, thank you, my friend. Be safe. I love you. Say hello to your girlfriend, man. We'll all be in touch soon, man. Love you too, bro. Later, man. All right, bud. Next topic. We've got another co-host guest. Let's see. Let's see if he can get us. Oh, Yo. we have another co-host. Put your phone sideways. What's I don't, up, dog? I don't want well, this. I, I don't want this long look. T- 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 I want to see your uh, entire bathroom. No, Just dude, turn. you gotta see. Dude, I'll take you on the on the fucking. But t- the turn broke, the phone man. sideways. We 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 want the full view. You're cheating. Oh, dude, but, oh, here, like this? Is that better? Yeah, you do, like, the landscape side. Like, your camera has to flip completely, you know. Is that better? Sure, I don't know. No, now you're sideways. Damn, that sucks. Your phone sucks, man. I just, I don't know how to hey, work shit, my friend. That's fine. You're good right there. What the hell? We can see your face. Ladies and gentlemen, we have another co-host, Sergio. Sergio is with us. Sergio, how you doing, bro? What's up, dude? What I'm is it that all it. my co-hosts got to grow beards? Like, I talked to Seabass recently. He has the same beard. Are you guys growing it together at the same time? Is this like a pact? How come I'm uh, not involved? Yeah, dude, I mean, honestly, there's not a lot to do, you know? So th- this gives me, like, I can I can measure time with the fucking follicles on my face. But wait a, wait a minute, man. But did you guys do this all together and I'm not involved? This is a pack, dude. I, I didn't want to spoil a surprise for you, man. We're all growing out our fucking facial hair so we could donate to your head. Thank you. <laughs> you got you, bro. Now, give us that What's tour. Where are we at, man? Are we in the, in the uh, Palace Le Sergio? No, this, this is here? the quarantine compound right here, baby. Oh, you got a quarantine compound too, man? Dude, all right. Let's do, let's do a crib style, bro. Crib style quarantine edition, bro. Show us what you got. Boom, boom. All right, look, look. Is that outside? Oh, this you got. This is how it starts. This is how it starts. This is how it's, it's supposed to start, actually. Right. Crib. I'm imagining your house smells like weed 
and like like armpit must. Oh, what's up, guys? What's up? Well, welcome to my fucking crib. There you go, bro. That's how it starts. Uh, and it's 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 very small. It's very small. Once you walk in, you know, yeah, you got the you got plenty of beers there. Woo! My man got the hand sink. Dish yeah, sink. well, the hand sink, dude. You know, he what got saying, the hand bro? sink, like, dish sink. That's a dual function. <laughs> got a shitty little, st- a, a little, a little fridge here with the essentials right there. What do you, you got know, in there, beer, yo? What's what's going ketchup, on in there? Okay, eggs. yo, how you got ketchup but no sandwich? Bro, this is, you know, I put ketchup in my beer sometimes. You know what I'm saying, <laughs> homie? <Ugh>. Fuck it. <laughs> Nature Valley, hell yeah, yo. That's how you stay healthy. Right here, baby. Okay, see, that's the real quarantine medicine. Yeah, man. I felt, honestly, like a couple days ago, I felt like my my throat was getting a little scratchy, so I had to fucking, I had to break that bad boy open. Um, How you been holding up, man? How's this treating you? You know what, man? Honestly, bro, um, surprisingly well, man. I'm, I'm, I'm starting to realize, I, I guess, I don't know, man. Maybe I'm fucking crazy, dude. Maybe I just love myself a lot, but I have no problem being alone by myself. I got no problems, dude. So you're turning into a hermit, is what you're saying? That's yeah. For the most part, it's my natural fucking state, though, dude. I am a fucking hermit. I mean, <laughs> well, you're getting a know. hermit beard. You know, those where those beards came from from hermits and shit. That shit didn't come from nothing cool. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Dude. It came from fucking from fucking lazy ass dudes in, in caves just fucking <laughs> meditating. But let me ask you, man, now you who's always a, a connoisseur of the vagina, like how 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 are you holding up with that, man? Are you are, are you still yeah. risking it? Are you risking the rules? Pornhub is free, man. Pornhub is free. <laughs> Yo, Pornhub Premium for Pornhub Premium is free, man. Thank God for that shit. Um, but yeah, man, I've definitely, no, yeah, definitely, definitely been missing, you know, that's the number one thing that I miss, that in comedy, obviously. But, um, but I'm, I'm trying to like, you know, be glass half full, dude, and thinking the positives, you know, you know, what's going to be amazing though, is that once all this shit is over and they release us back into the wild, like the animals that we truly are, like, dude, there's going to be a fucking sexual renaissance that's going to be happening that I'm going to be in the middle of, bro. I'm going to be right in the middle of this sexual <laughs> renaissance, bro. But, but wait, man. I mean, you know, people think like this, but I've thought on the contrary lately. I'm like, okay, people are excited about this. Yes. You know, like everyone feels like they're going to rush out. But I'm also thinking people aren't going to rush out that fast because there's going to be this sense of doubt, you know, paranoia. Like, what if the next person coughs on me and, it, and we're back at it again? You know, this I've been wondering, man, like what's going to favor more the desperation of just wanting to be outside or the cautiousness of I don't want to get caught with nothing. And I think what's going to end up happening, we're going to get a complete split. I think half of America is going to be inside where the other half is going to be out. It's not going to look exactly 100 percent. I think I think you're totally right, dude. Like the fucking, you know, the the warriors and the and just like the the real fucking crazy people. Are gonna be staying inside. They're gonna be terrified to, you know, to continue their lives, and so on and so forth. <clears throat> and then, you know, the crazy motherfuckers like us, like every comedian, is gonna be out there just running amok, bro. Like we're just gonna be fucking, like, yeah, they're just gonna be yeah. running through it. Yeah, I, I could definitely see. I could see musicians are really trying to go out there and do their stuff, <sighs> but when they notice that the the crowd isn't there, yeah, I don't, I don't know what it puts us. That's why I'm so, I'm so intrigued, man. I'm just intrigued to see how this all plays out, you know, like where, where do we go? Like, what is this all going to look like on the other side? Because we are not going back to the same shit at all. This yeah. reminds me of like, remember when September 11th, you know, pre September 11th, you know, traveling, bro, you could have gone with a bazooka. Didn't nobody <laughs> give a fuck. So long as that shit said novelty <laughs> on it, you were like, this guy's just being a dummy. You can fucking, you can come with those fucking, the, a big giant box from Acme, like in the fucking cartoons. Yeah, so. right? You, <laughs> you can fucking do that shit, man. But now, no. Like, now it's like, it's turned into like. Well, now you can't bring a fucking water bottle, dude. There's exactly. A water bottle so if 9-11 made such an effect on people like that. What does no, this right. coronavirus do? Like, what what methods have we changed now that we used to think that we took for granted? Because Dude, all of this I, now I, is I, gone. I couldn't agree with you more, man. Like, I, I agree with everything you said, bro. Like, definitely, 
we're not going back to the same shit. It's it's like, you know, unfortunately, that's the truth. But there's no way that we're just going to like, okay, this is over. And we're right back to the same old shit. Not happening, bro. No it's way, gonna be, I think it's going to be more difficult to travel, bro. I think like, that, sure. uh, listen, they could say, they could say Monday, everything's back to normal. Just, let's just say, right? They say Monday, everything's back to normal. Or let's live into what Trump's hoping for for Easter. Let's just say Easter, we come back, everybody goes right back to work, normal hours, normal everything, right? Wrong. Doesn't work like that anymore. Now we had such a horrible financial effect that mm -hmm. our company's willing to take everybody back. Are they going to be okay with taking everybody? What happens when that coworker coughs next to the other coworker? Are we back yo, into restrictions? Yo. Do those bosses now have to quarantine everybody again? Is, is this going to be a, a, a police case by case basis? What happens? That's where I feel America then becomes different. It's just not the same. We could start tomorrow if you like. It's not the same. We are completely different. The day this all went down is the day that not just America, but the world itself changed. Yeah. One thing oh, was America sure. changing policies. But now the Bro, when, world. When I, when I saw that fucking like uh, when Trump made his address or whatever, you know, whatever day that was like two weeks ago or whatever, however long ago that was when he made that like State of the Union address, you know, bro, I knew right away. I was like, fuck, dude, like, I think I stepped outside my house and I was just like talking to myself. But I was like, yo, this is going to like, that's it. This is changing the you face of the earth forever. The sky goodbye. Be like, goodbye, world. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Peace. It was good knowing you. Yeah, bro. But um, oh man. But yeah, man. I mean, you know, it might. It's gonna take some time, and it's definitely gonna be different. It's gonna be a different paradigm that we're gonna exist in. For but, sure. But uh, sure. hey, man, pussy's still gonna be out there, bro. Pussy and dick are still gonna exist in. So. Oh hey. yeah. Now we're all gonna fucking throw caution to the wind, still like we do with that. That's one thing in humanity that never change. Throwing caution to the That's wind for sure, you to stick bro. it in. But I'm interested <laughs> to see. Yeah, man. How the fuck? How the fuck are comedy shows gonna be, dude? I feel like I feel like it's just gonna be comedians. Like there's gonna be no crowd, just a fucking frothing at the mouth comedians. We're all gonna have to pay each other to make each other laugh. That's what's gonna happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Serge, man, I miss you, man. I know one thing's for sure that won't change when this is all over is the very fact that we'll all get together and do more episodes as a, as a podcast together. Um, yeah, I miss man. I miss your co-host proudness, man. I miss it. all my guys, man. I wish we were all together just doing this show. Uh, but I really do hope that it happens sooner rather than later. Uh, you want people to follow you in the meantime, man, while we got this going on? Yeah, bro. Check me out, you know, on the gram, Magic City Pacino. Um, you know, I'll be posting videos of my dad dancing and, um, you know, just me being a general asshole. Oh, fuck yeah, man. Listen, I already follow some of those. Them shits are hilarious. Guys, follow my <laughs> co-hosts, man. They got some real insane stuff going on that they're posting on social media. Serge, we'll see you soon, my friend. We'll, we'll get back. Hey, man, good talking you know to it. you, brother. For real, man. Y'all boys be good, man. All right, brother. Take care. Love, man. Peace. <laughs> next topic! Uh, our next guest uh, is another good friend of ours of the show. <laughs> I haven't had a chance to talk to him. There he is. We we're giving you a little quick intro in here, guys. This, like I said, this is a good friend of ours from the show. Um, he hasn't been on before. We hope to have him in the future. Um, great artist. I've had a chance to check him out all over South Florida. Amazing musician. Uh, we have recording artist Luis Alberto. So, you know what? Actually, hey, hey, I'm kind of hey. lying, man. You were on our show when we did the 100th anniversary show. Right? You did the... You were we on did. Our, yeah. We did. I was, yeah, man. Those, that's in the, uh, the burn files. <laughs> that <laughs> sucks, <laughs> man. You know, we did that whole show, and the audio and the video just went to shit. Like, it was just sad. Like, you had such an amazing performance that day, and we had such a great conversation on live. I think that for whoever was there, it was a real treat, man, because we just could never air that episode. It was so sad. I, I think I went through. Uh, I think my depression was worse then than it is now with this virus. <laughs> oh, my, oh, my God. I felt it. You know what? For me, I, I had so much from that day, from that night. You're right. right. It, was, it was a great experience. Great. I mean, you did an amazing job at just curating the whole thing, the way that, that, that you did it. You got to meet all the musicians and really have like a quick minute to talk to them. 
Yeah, no, it was beautiful, man. That it experience was. was enough. It sucked. I knew that it was a good, a good set. It sucked that it's not there, but that experience was amazing. So thank you, man. Um, my friend, I appreciate it, man. It, it was. Uh, let me ask, man. I, I know it. we're all going through. I feel like we ask each other every day, and I feel like I've asked all my guests, but it's just something I'm so curious with, how you've been holding up through this whole virus experience. You need a drink just for that answer. I'm holding. I'm holding Cheers. up. I'm holding up right now. <laughs> That's your answer, John. It's a drink. Damn it. Yeah. Uh, man, we got oh, yeah. people. You know what? Sorry if you hear little noises. We we've got people still trying to call us into the show. If anyone's seeing this, because we got Facebook Live, guys. If you're seeing this, just sit tight. We'll get back to you, Zephyr. And I saw you call me, man. So I see there's hope with you. We had a guest before you before we moved on to you. Uh, but yeah. I didn't know how to see you Can in you Facebook see me Live, now? and I'm going around. I'm like, how the heck do I know? I <laughs> yeah, if, if anyone's trying to see this and people are confused, guys, just try to get on Facebook Live. If you need to message people and tell them Facebook Live, We're John Everyman or the Everyman Podcast Show, it's on there somewhere. I don't know. I don't do IT production stuff in here. <laughs> but Luis, let me ask, man. So uh, your your whole thing here, how, how have you been holding up, man? Have you been doing good? I've been doing, yeah, man. I think that this this time, I mean, all that time that I would have spent being out at Rosas or at Churchill's, going out to playing gigs, being with you and and you know with half of the crew, I'm 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 kind of that that the dynamic of that relationship is changing. I think that we're all now actually talking. <laughs> well, actually, you know what it is, man. It's, it's just. Um... I think Mr. Goodnight always puts a good perspective on this. Sometimes he says, hey, we're podcast friends. But at first I looked at him like, man, that's so horrible. But when you really look at it, it's like, yeah, because once we're not doing the things we normally did together, now how often are you reaching out to these people? You know, but I'm not exactly. gonna lie. Like uh, before all this, man, I, I've had a little bit of chance to talk to you, uh, Taylor Davis. I've had a chance to talk to Ambry John. You know, a lot of the local people that have performed yeah. at Churchill's and uh, a lot of these stages throughout South Florida. I still on occasion, man, you know, I try to stay communicating through like Instagram and Facebook, like where I see like a post or something. I try to just go out of my way and respond and just let them know, hey, you know, I try to laugh with them and just make them feel like, hey, you know, it's still the same old thing. You know what I mean? And even yeah. moments like this, having you here last week, we had Taylor, you know, we got you guys together here. We're able to you know, still communicate a little bit. I, I, I think um, friendships are being shown right now, the strength of friendships, you know, which is pretty oh, cool. Yeah. Uh, you know, I have a quick question to you in regards of all this. Um, and I know we wanted to discuss this too before we got on. Um, and I haven't asked anybody neither. What do you think, man, you know, uh, from the artist per scene, uh, what do you think it's going to be in regards to, to the future you know how, how do you think we're going to be going about things do you think things still stay the same you think crowds are going to still pack up to see their favorite performers are are, are the clubs going to jam together you know like wh what are we going to expect that's my co-host by the way in the background <laughs> don't worry man and um, i think one of the, the the things that i've been seeing the most is the impact that the musicians actually have on the scene and and the crowds that we bring and the relationship that we should have with the venues so i think that from the future of this even if it's packed not packed whatever this turns into i think that the musician the artist right now the comedian the writer right now we are becoming we're we're, we're for local for for you know promoting local we're becoming that source People follow us, we bring to them. I think that it's going to change that dynamic. It's definitely going to change that dynamic. Um, as far as reach, I can tell you, I've had, I've been able to focus so much of my time into what I'm going to start putting out and recording and everything else that I think that we're finding that we don't only have to support local, but we have a huge footprint, man. Huge footprint because I have people plug in from different places listening to, to my show that I just did at Cava. You know, from Canada, from New York, from LA, from so we are 
we're, we're going to be able to shine. I think that the, the future of the, the arts community is going to blow up. Because that's all people can do right now. Yeah. You can either see stupid shit. <laughs> or you I can, see, like, you I know, see you with the guitar, man. You're, you're making me nostalgic with the whole thing right now. How about this, man? Because, you know, I, I, my producer was sending me signals there that we're, we're, we're getting close to your time here. I want you to shut it down with some music, man. Last week, uh, Taylor did an awesome job doing a song for us, man. Uh, I want to see that, man. I miss you guys playing, and I know you have such a tremendous sound, man. I want to share that with the people. You down to do that? I mean, you're holding the guitar. I'm, I'm down to do that. Unless I'm you wanted to look cool different. just holding a guitar. Or unless, you know. I was only just looking. I just had it here. I want to talk. <laughs> okay, I don't I'm have sorry. To today. It's just, you know, long-haired yeah. people always got to have a guitar around, I guess, or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It, I, it came with a package. When I was born, it was a ukulele. I got and it. And then they give you another. <laughs> you up, you go up as the years grow, or the hair grows. <laughs> uh, Luis, yeah, man, would you would you be would you would you be down to do that? You want to play a song? Yeah, let's do it. What what song are you gonna I'm play gonna for us? Something... By way? I'm not gonna play an original. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna play something that I tried out a little earlier today, but it's a song that I think uh, if you know me, uh, it's the way that I see life. Well then, sure. So wait, you'll see. It's, it's my vibe. It's my vibe for sure. <laughs> Oh, some things in life are bad. They can really make you mad. All the things just make you swear and curse. When you're chewing on life's griddle, don't grumble, give a wish. This will make things turn out for the best. Oh, always look on the bright side of life. Always look on the bright side of life. If life seems jolly rot, there's something you forgot, and that's to laugh and smile and sing. When you're feeling in the dumps, don't be silly chums. Just purse your lips and whistle, that's the thing. Oh, always look on the bright side of life. Always look on the bright side of life. For life is quite absurd, and that's the final word. You must always face the curtain with a bow. Forget about your sins, give the audience a grin. Enjoy is your last chance anyhow. Oh, always look on the bright side of death. Just before you take that terminal breath. Now life's a piece of shit when you look at it. Life's a laugh and that's a joke, it's true. You'll see it all a show, give laughing as you go. And remember that the last laugh is on you. Oh, always look on the bright side of life. Always look on the bright side of life. Always look on the bright side of life. <laughs> My man, people, Luis Alberto. Luis Alberto, what, you want people to follow you on Instagram, man? Social media, you want to make some new friends in the meantime? Yeah. 
<laughs> yes, of course. And Share it with follow, us. follow me at uh, underline and uh, underscore LG Music. Uh, follow, I mean, support the local community. If, if uh, you get this through me, then support John. Um, definitely. I mean, uh, Taylor Davis in the local scene, you mentioned, and Boriani, Alexa Lash, and Jacqueline Lore. Follow everyone, really. Um, and Mr. Goodnight. Uh, I miss I, I I I miss Mr. Goodnight right now. I miss Theo. I gotta reach out to him. That's a, that's my next reach out. Where is he? I miss I miss my good friend. He's not here right now. He's uh he's do he's practicing very well the, the self quarantine and respecting all ordinances that are out there. Um, we'll be together soon, okay. my friend. I promise you. I wish you the best of luck. Stay safe. Wash your hands. Suggest it to others. We'll be back together in no time in this new world that awaits us. Ladies and gentlemen, Luis Alberto. And uh, again, thank you. Have a good one, bud. Thank you, brother. You got it. Out. <laughs> Dude, I'm getting scratched out like it was a draft. <laughs> Do it. Out. Next topic. Our next guest is, uh... man, I feel like I've done a checking on my comedians but i feel like this is our this is my brethren's here these are these are my people so i feel like we have to check on each other you know we got to see how things are going and see how we're moving here yo yo Oh, there he is, ladies and gentlemen. We've got fellow comedian, one of my peoples. I was saying, I gotta check on my peoples, man. Re Yo, yeah, Nick. let me get my video. Um, all right, my man. video going. What do you mean your video's gone? Oh, you got no feed? Oh man, hey, listen, man. Technical difficulties are happening everywhere. This is. This is the world we live in now. We we do raunchy shows with like horrible editing and crazy cameras and videos and whatnot. But how you doing, man? Can you at least hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you good, man. I hit the audio button and said I'm hitting video right now. <laughs> we can get my chair so I can sit down and then we're good. Hey, man, as soon as you get it right, we'll get it going. Uh, but how you been doing, man? So everything's been going good for you? You've been staying alive? No, in this it's new fucking world? horrible. This shit sucks. You got me on the all the time. Uh, all right, here we go. Hey, listen, man. It's it's a brand new world. We're all making adjustments uh, true and through. Damn. There you go. All right. It, it, you, can you turn the phone sideways? I mean, I feel like I get everybody right now with the... With like partial oh. angle, you know how you know how that thing goes where it just shows you in the middle and you got to yeah, keep it this way for Instagram. There you go, but there you go. I can see you perfect, just like that. There you go. Uh, Facebook for some reason it gives you like a full thing when you drop it like sideways and whatnot. There you go. We can see you, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, make sure you can see your boy. <laughs> I'm white. You could put me like it, like on anything. You could put the only thing you can't see me on is when I lean on a white wall. Like forget it. It's done. <laughs> but yeah, man. So it sucks, huh? I, I mean, we obviously see it. We obviously see that uh, it's not been a good time for everybody. But you know what? Actually, I've been talking to a couple people. Some people have found positivity in it all. That I think that's the only way they're being able to cope. But you're you're giving me here a, a realistic answer. It sucks. No, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it's just sad. You know, it's stuff that uh. I mean, I'm, I'm glad it's happening this way that everybody really going out there and getting sick. You know what I mean? So if it yeah. helps save lives, then it makes sense. But besides that, it's just killing us, bro. Like being home over and over every day, that's not. It is, not man. Just um, fucking the life out of me, bro. And you know, it, it's been hard to adjust. I feel that like every day I wake up, I go through like a two step process. Number one, I got to remember that this is happening. And then number two, I got to sit there and convince myself that everything surrounding it is happening. Yeah. And then go about with the rest of the day. You know, I don't know. And I'm not lying, man. I've caught myself a couple days feeling like I'm waking up to a regular world. Like my body naturally just feels like it's going to wake up to a regular Friday. And 
in the first no, few seconds. I didn't like, even know it was minute. Friday, bro. You know what? I, I'm I'm already there. I, I lost I lost track of time last week. I think I realized it was Friday. Uh, yesterday I realized that it was Thursday, so that's how I kind of figured out that it's Friday now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty soon we're gonna be the people having to rely on sundials and shit. <laughs> uh, but yeah. what, what have you? I know it gets dark late around eight nine, so. <laughs> <laughs> we're going back dark, to caveman to tactics to and shit. We're going back to caveman tactics. We're going to look for the North Star to find direction. <laughs> uh, but yo, man, so tell me though, have you been able to at least find anything to do in this, you know, in the in these times? Mm, honestly, no, bro. Like I set up my little podcast area. That's what I have behind me here. Okay, but that's all I really did. I set it up. I shot a few things, but I really didn't like them. It's it's to the point to where I have all the time in the world, but the way I got all the time is unmotivating, bro. It's like, damn, nothing again. Me, I'm the type of person, like, my practice and my, the way I learn and the way I grow is by doing shit. And if I can't do shit, man, I really feel like I'm stuck, bro. Because, like, when I'm on stage, yeah, I have my material, but, bro, like, I, I come up with stuff on the spot. And then that's the stuff that I end up keeping and going home and working on. But that's like the beginning, you know? It's like, I can't find my keys, bro. <laughs> I need to leave. <laughs> but you know what, man? Uh, I, I, I agree. I, I feel that as a comedian or people in that type of entertainment that have mm -hmm. to rely on the crowd for their form of entertainment, I mean, it's very hard-pressed. Like, um, you just can't just do a stand-up show right now you know, it's not going to hold the same, the same weight. Yeah. You know what I mean? You could have done your best performance that you did in any of the venues that you've done in past. Try to perform that right now on a video and post it. You know, it's just not going to have that same value. I've been watching like, um, for some reason, you know, in this time, I've catch myself watching these late night hosts like Stephen Colbert, uh, Seth Meyers, Jimmy Kimmel. Um, Jimmy Fallon. I've been watching all of them, man, just to kill the time, right? But as I'm watching them, man, I'm like, man, these guys aren't as good without their crowd. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. the, the crowd, I, I think that what I've come to realize is it's like a two-way street, man. I feel that my com the crowd is just as important to my set as the comedy is. You know what I of mean? Of course, man. It's like going to a party. If you, would you go to a party if you know only one other person is going to be there? Right. You know what? You know, it's, it's like, like going to a silent party. You ever you ever been to one of those silent parties or at least seen one? No, fuck no, bro. It is Stay the saddest. In my house. Listen, I was in Denver a few months back, and uh, I'm out there in the Lodo area, and uh, while I'm hanging out, we happen to run into a silent party. It was. Mm -hmm. a, it looked so weird because nobody was making noise. You couldn't hear the music unless you were standing near a headphones of, of one of the people. But they were all having a good time. I was like, this is horrible. Like, you're having a good time, but I can't hear anything. Like, mm -hmm. I, you know, yeah. like, how are you gauging that? And I, I, I feel like we're all in our own silent party right now. <laughs> yeah. For real, because I've been home, man, and I only leave for the necessities. Food and shit, you know what I mean? But. Yeah, you're doing the. Wait for it to be over, man. Let me ask you, uh, wh wh where were things for you at the time when all this was going on? How were things going for you? I mean, I, I know I follow you plenty, man. <laughs> no, I mean, I I doing always, great things, bro, but I'm always finding the work. I, I at least have something to do, you know, two, three times a month. That's good paying to keep me, you know, afloat. And I've had it for a long time, though. I mean, like, it just sucks because I had some shows planned. But it was still based on people canceling because of the, the virus. Right. And um, they are like, hey, man, anything you can feel in? Anything you can feel? I was like, hell yeah. So it was like that's when I was getting the majority of the calls. But then even that slowed down because it got so bad that they're like, no, nah, man, the club is like, no, nah, you can't do it. Uh, let me ask you, man. I I've seen you do some skits. Have you been able to at least think of a couple that you might want to do now, or at least write it? Yeah, bro. I, I, I write. Like, like, the whole thing. Like I write all the time, but I write my. You know, uh, I've been trying to write on a more of a directing, producing role to get like real movie quality shit out. Right. 
That's so I haven't really idea. been dropping the skits because I want to do bigger projects in just a minute or 15 seconds. You know, I really want to give people something to really grasp. 15 to 20 minutes, 30 minute, you know, short and stuff like that. Are you doing them like on a, on a particular website where people can see those videos? Or were you preparing to do it like that? No. Right, well, right now I'm just just shooting, bro. Shooting, writing. Um, We got the guys like Fat and Funny, T.P. Miller, Gamma 305, um... Miami got jokes, burger, shade, okay. wait for her to get after this baby, um, comedian untouchable, but we've been writing and, and um, putting together like a, a TV oh, so been, series. So you've been working with some good names there, man. Oh yeah, man. Cause now we all came to the point to where we realized, bro, we're doing good, but to get us to this next level, we have to come together and really give everybody who's interested in us something you know what i mean something to love us for so that way we can be that next it thing bro, i'm not trying to feature for nobody not, like it's cool you know i'll do it for the money and experience right. and stuff like that because i love being on stage but i'm just trying to skip right over that bro and, and just literally have my own headlining status my own shows my own shit. you know it's been some time since i've talked to you man and i've had you on the show man um, I know you've done a ton of work, man, but, mm -hmm. uh, how, how much have you, how much have you grown since, man? Because, you know, I know you were already doing big things then, man, but like you had just came back from London at that point. Um, you were doing some pretty special things then, man. And just hearing you talk right now, I'm like, man, it, it it's gotta be amazing. As a matter of fact, man, I, I've seen, that's right. We did something together at the, at the improv, you know, you just been doing so much, man, but. Can you touch on that, man? How much everything's been going for you successfully? I'm sorry, I just had a hard time hearing your dog was in the back. Oh yeah, man, my dog is my new yeah, my, my dog is my new co-host, if you will. <laughs> 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 I ran out of co-host, so I needed someone to come in and fill in for me on the dead spots. Oh. Uh, but no, I was saying, man, you know, last time we spoke, you were you had just accomplished uh, some shows in London. Um, last time I seen you, you, you had your own. Oh yeah. That's another thing that messed me up, bro. I had a show in freaking Montreal that got canceled. Oh God. Plane tickets. They bought for me and everything. Hotel room ready. And I just had to postpone everything. And it sucks. Cause it was at the, the soda club and that's what they do just for laughs. You know what I mean? So it'd have been real cool being in the building. Um, but yeah, man, I, I you know, in, in, in retrospect to all that, man, uh, mm -hmm. I'm guessing you're growing a lot, man. Like, touch on that, man. How much have you been growing since, man? Because I don't even see, understand the growth, bro. I just, like, I just always have a, a, a plan. And then the plans just get bigger. And the more I think on them, the more stuff that I do, you just come up with more things. And, bro, like, you just can't stop. Once you hit a, a, a little milestone or a little marker where you feel accomplished, it's like, okay, what's next? You know what I mean? As much as I get the high on stage, I get a high off of, like, Yo, I just accomplished this. How do I get to this next level? Like, I want people to look at me like, I don't even know how to explain it. Uh, but like, I don't like, I don't know, bro. Like, he's the next thing, you know. And you know, so everybody's doing it. Doing it you, I got man. to keep going. Now, honestly, man, no homo, bro. But you know, I see it with you. You you have this uh, this growth about you, man. Every time I blink my eyes or I see you again on a post or just anything, man. It's like you 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 outdid yourself from the last thing you you feel me and I'm like man this dude like always man you you you're constantly a motivator man I I really appreciate that watching someone like you doing your thing. Thank you, thank you, bro. Um, let me ask you, man, because you made you, as soon as you said the word, it just triggered a question. I'm curious to ask you. Hi, mm -hmm. you said the word hi, so motherfuckers are still smoking out here, obviously. But yeah, hell yeah. And you know sometimes when we smoke, we cough. We cough like we're coughing up our lungs. Yeah, uh, yeah. And these people times, giving me shit. Like, oh, you... oh, nah, bro, it's gas, bro. It's gas. <laughs> are you scared nah, of smoking and choking in front of someone right now? <laughs> like, are you cool nope. with it or watching them choke? Like, you trusting it? Bro, I'm only around very minimal people, man. <laughs> <laughs> but you're not oh. growing like a complex coughing around others. If you're smoking some good shit, you're like, oh shit, I'm about to choke this one. Up. Is anyone watching? Yeah. <laughs> oh, not sucking it up at all, bro. What happens, it happens. I don't got that shit, bro. I'm at home. 
I just, you know, I was scared because, like, I, I'm like, man, I don't want to smoke. And then, like, I'm outside or something. I'm just choking from the last shit I was smoking. And so someone sees me and they're like, oh, this guy got that. And just fucking call CDC on me. <laughs> yeah. No, but they don't do shit. You got it, you don't got it. Sit your ass at home. Do you get nervous if you see someone cough or sneeze around you right now? No. Not really, because again, I'm home. I ain't around nobody, bro. So like, <laughs> it, so so, but but you don't have your family there. The kids are good. Everyone's good. No, nah, they were their mom. Um, <laughs> I live with my kids. <laughs> yeah, weekend you, dad. You got that yeah, real yeah. social distancing. You took advantage yeah. of it right now. Got it. I see them on Facetime. They can <laughs> <laughs> cough the on the phone all you dead. want. <laughs> Baby, mom can't call you talking about when you don't see your kids. Uh, uh-uh, uh, not according to the CDC. <laughs> Oh man. Um so you got anything so then you don't have anything planned right now. You're just kinda idling things out. Yeah, bro, just chilling. Next show I have planned is on four twenty. Oh um, yeah? Yeah, the Miami Improv four twenty celebration, you know, it's a holiday. Oh man. So. You know what? <laughs> I feel like if that happens, man, you're gonna have to count me in, man, because I, I feel like I, I, I need some sort of sort of form of entertainment or something right now. Hey bro, nah, definitely, bro. You know I got you. <laughs> um Nick, man, where can people follow you again, man? Every time I feel like you you have like a hundred places people can follow you right now, but where are you more popular? No, nah, man, just aren't um on Google. I just just Google um I just want everybody to look up part-time dad on youtube just type in part-time dad part-time dad my stand up comes up okay and um you see my stuff and then from there you can check the instagram it's ridiculous comedy but man it's just nick now man look up nick sue front that's my name that's right and don't disrespect and, yeah that's it bro nick man thank you brother i i again i miss meeting all my comedian brethren man i miss you guys immensely you know I hope that we're all yeah, back. Yeah, bro. We need to get it together, bro. When things get back, we'll have like some shows and even do some shit like bowling or something like that, bro. Just to anything, back. right? Just anything, yeah. man. Just to feel that togetherness again, man. Uh, my friend, take care. You and your family. I hope everything goes well for you. Yeah. And we'll be out of this before you know it. That 420 show is going down. I believe. Yeah, it. bro. Just stay safe. Same thing. You, your family, your dog, all that. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you, my friend. I needed a co-host. <laughs> all right, dude. I'll right. bounce, man. Take care. You too, man. He ran out of shit to say, so it's time to go. Yeah. That, that's not- Ladies and gentlemen, I think we'll just wrap up the show there because uh, I just ran out of people and I ran out of list. I promise you. Um, thank you again to each and every one of you for tuning in. You guys have been an awesome crowd, um, at least in terms that I'm assuming. I don't know if you're really listening or not anymore. Hopefully you are. Hopefully we're entertaining some of you. Um, thank you again. Please stay safe out there. This is very serious. I appreciate Walter for sacrificing himself against social distancing orders and uh, presenting himself tonight with me here. Um, I really thank him for that. That's when you you know you got a good crew and we're all still willing to do what we can for each other here. Um, again, thank you to all my guests that participated this evening and shared their thoughts and their expressions and whatnot. I know that this isn't an easy time. And um, for some of us, it's a foreign time. And we're just all trying to do our best and keep ourselves sane. Um, And I thank them for that. Please make sure you follow them. Make sure you watch their videos. They're still working hard for you. These guys want to be available. They want to entertain. You know, I, 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 that's a real passion in them. And if they don't have anything in particular that's new, there's stuff that you can check out from them that's old. Like our episodes. We have a bunch ourselves. Guys, make sure you check those out under the everymanpodcastshow.com website. It's everymanpodcastshow.com. And on YouTube, Everyman Podcast Show. Thank you to my co-hosts, both my dogs, Lucky and Lily. Uh... Thank Walter again. My crew, even though they're not here, I am thankful for them, man. They're good guys. Uh, Check out No Emotion, man. He's got a new album coming out. We'll get him on next week. Like I said, that's right. You heard it. Next week, we'll be back. Thank you. I'm John Everyman. 
See you on the next one, people. Oh, I need to buy a monocle for uh -huh. my third eye. I went to the hospital and died. I'm tired of being the middle child. Time to commit murder. I'm gonna say something. Let me know if it hurts you. Muslim hamburgers are better than American hamburgers. Go to church and catch the Holy Spirit in COVID-19. Mean-spirited ever since I was 19. My sense was knocked out of me like Aaron Hernandez. Band-Aids and bandages. Yeah. This ain't even cutting the lights off. Okay, um... <laughs> I was just making you don't sure. pay me enough. Yeah, the sound guy says it's over. <laughs> Fuck you. I don't even care if I got nothing to do with the electricity. I'm just out of here.